Well, with me in the studio is Mohammed Taha, who's from our BBC Arabic service. Mohammed, just tell us more about what you've been hearing about what's been going on overnight. Uh, good morning, Sally. Uh, overnight, uh, heavy fighting in Gaza, in north, south, west of the Strip, uh, heavy man-to-man -man fighting, uh, and still uh, the, the shelling on Gaza uh, is continuing uh, in several parts, uh, uh, concentrated on Mukhayam al shati refugee camp, and also in Jabalia. The Israeli forces are saying again that uh, the Hamas fighters are using uh, like hospitals, uh, uh, tunnels under hospitals in their operation. And this is, uh, this is, uh, this is, um, uh, a warning that you know these hospitals could be a target as we can see in the pictures on the screen these are the uh, the israeli strikes all night uh, on gaza there is a, a news that there are 18 agencies of the un issued uh, a, 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 an urgent call in the last hours uh, urging uh, for a humanitarian pause and they are really shocked from the number of children and women suffering in this uh, in this um, uh, conflict, uh, as you ca as you may uh, know, that you know the uh, Palestinian authorities are saying that the number uh, the number of of, uh, of of deaths of this conflict in Gaza reached uh, nearly 10,000 people so far. And of course, those UN agencies pushing the call for a humanitarian pause at the same time that Anthony Blinken is doing the same thing as well as he tours around. We'll talk about him in a moment, but just. Do you know any more about this airdrop of medical aid that uh, Jordan was able to accomplish overnight? As you mentioned in your intro, they managed to do that with the, uh, cooperation with the IDF. They cannot uh, just send uh, an aeroplane in the am am midst of these uh, missiles and, and uh, F-16 uh, air uh, aeroplanes uh, um, on top of Gaza and the, the, the shelling from air, uh, land and sea. Uh, and I think we had a guest from Egypt commenting on that, that this is, might be a, a, a pushing card against Egypt that is uh, closing the, the, the Rafah border and having a firm stance uh, on that. And they are also uh, uh, against the, the American, um, uh, American uh, point of view for a humu only a humanitarian uh, pause and they want a ceasefire. So I think the, 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 the Egypt will appear, will look a little bit uh, in a weaker city, uh, position uh, to Jordan who managed to send an aeroplane and Egypt, they have a border and the political and the intense of fighting and the, the diplomatic situation does not allow them uh, to, uh, to, to make a big uh, stance in, in the humanitarian effort. And what is the Arabic press or social media to saying in terms of uh, the Secretary of State's visit? Because, of course, he had quite a few meetings over the weekend, didn't he, with various leaders? Everybody was expecting that he would achieve something related to the humanitarian pause, but this is, didn't happen because the uh, Benjamin Netanyahu's firm stance that no pause unless the, the hostages would be freed. Uh, he, uh, the, the, diff the differences between the United States and Egypt was clear in the press conference that Egypt wants a ceasefire. The Americans don't want that. Uh, he didn't manage to achieve a lot. This is what, what social media is saying. He didn't manage to achieve a lot in the, uh, in the meeting in Jordan when he met Mahmoud Abbas, uh, the uh, Palestinian uh, president, to convince him to take over the administration of Gaza after Ham Hamas uh, um, uh, going away, as the scenario su suggesting. Uh, uh, he didn't manage to convince him to do that. And now he's going to Turkey, which is the, the, the most firm stance in the Middle East against is Israel. Will he achieve something? That's why why this is explaining why the uh, American administration sent also William Burns to try to 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 put some more efforts to achieve something. Okay.
Uh, Mohammed, for now, thank you very much indeed. Mohammed Taha there from the BBC Arabic service. Well, hundreds of thousands of people are uh, hungry in Gaza, as you would imagine, as food and water supplies run out. The World Food Programme has warned. The agency has told the BBC exclusively that out of 130 bakeries operating in Gaza before the war, 11 have been destroyed by Israeli airstrikes. Many of those remaining are unable to operate due to a shortage of fuel and flour. BBC Arabic's Adnan Albush has visited some bakeries in southern Gaza.